speaker. Iceland, Sweden, Ireland, France, the UK. These are just a few of the countries that have dropped all their mandates. However, this government, without any evidence, is continuing to bar Canadians from getting on airplanes to visit the loved ones they so want to see. Yep. And so the madness continues. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Minister for Transport are calling for the travel ban against unvaccinated Canadians to be extended by two more years. The Canadian government will need around $34.7 million from taxpayers to enforce such prolonged and heady mandates. The very same taxpayers being demonized for refusing to take the coronavirus vaccine. According to the stipulations of a government document from late last year, the Trudeau-led administration is confident that money to sustain the travel ban and federal vaccine mandate will keep pouring in until 2024. So the Canadian government will not consider the fact that it is trampling on citizens' rights and stopping families from being there for each other by enforcing the ban. It will also not consider any developments that can occur between now and 2024. As long as the money keeps pouring in, it will stop Canadians from exercising their most basic rights. Welcome to Front Page News, a channel dedicated to bringing you the latest news updates without the ill-concealed and abundant hypocrisy of the left wing and mainstream media. You can support the channel and its content by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. You can also turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Let's dive right in. It's been, they're spending $30 million to prevent Canadians from getting on airplanes. On what day will the minister allow people to fly and end the mandates? You're here. The Honourable Minister of Transport. Speaker, I want to thank my colleagues for reminding Canadians of how many countries have put together a mandate to protect the health and safety of travellers, of those who work in the travelling sector. Mr. Speaker, everything we've done so far is intended to protect the health of Canadians. And we've, guide, we've always been guided by the advice that we receive from our experts. I'm not going to take advice from the Conservatives, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to take advice from our scientists, from our doctors, and we will constantly review our policies and do the right thing for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Here we go again, blaming science for the government's inefficiency and tyranny. Ontario's coronavirus data has proven that the vaccine-free have a similar per capita infection, hospitalization, and death rate compared to the fully vaccinated. It also proves that people who have taken the booster shots are worse off by every metric. So why is the Canadian government so hell-bent on its segregation campaign? As Alberta Premier Jason Kenney notes, Canada remains one of the few countries still enforcing such cruel and callous restrictions on its citizens. When Alberta asked Kenney about the usefulness of the travel ban and when it would be lifted, here is what the Premier had to say. We think the vaccine passport serves no useful health purpose. They don't have an alternative, which is a negative test, which might be a reasonable accommodation. But in any event, I think it is a pointless policy. And I do not know of any other major country in the world that has a similar policy. Even countries like New Zealand and Australia, which went ridiculously overboard during the lockdowns, are about to end various travel restrictions for residents and foreigners. Several European countries, including Iceland, Sweden, France, and the United Kingdom, have dropped all mandates. But the Canadian government wants to continue enforcing its travel ban for two more years. Two more years of Canadians not being able to travel to see their loved ones, conduct business transactions, and live freely without being harassed and humiliated by the government. As opposed to what the Minister of Transport states in the video, the Trudeau government is not working in line with science. In fact, it has dismissed it. It is only following the wishes of Klaus Schwab, Trudeau's latest favorite person and the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. Recall that just before the pandemic, the government of Canada, Air Canada, and two major Canadian airports entered into a partnership with the World Economic Forum to create digital travel identifications for Canadians. The project facilitates travel restrictions as we have seen with the vaccine passport system in Canada. In addition, Trudeau's travel ban is based on the World Health Organization's international health regulations, which mandate countries to recognize the rights of travelers concerning the treatment of personal data, informed consent, and non-discrimination. However, Trudeau's government has continuously demonized and harshly discriminated against vaccine-free Canadians. As it stands, it is no longer about science or keeping the public safe. Every data has proven that the vaccine is not needed for that. It does not stop people from contracting the coronavirus disease or spreading it to others. It also poses a number of health risks to Canadians. This is clearly about the control that Trudeau has over citizens and his willingness to continue to feed the paranoia at leftists. But all Canadians, regardless of political affiliations, must consider how emboldened the Canadian government has become. If it is willing to go this far to trample on the rights of citizens now, what happens when another opportunity of human rights abuse presents itself? What do you think about the Canadian government extending the travel ban to 2024? Please drop your comments below and hit the like button. 
You can also check out our other videos and subscribe to the channel to support its growth. Thanks for watching.